Happy Sunday everybody! Today we are going to be covering data blending. Now I don't really teach this very often because a lot of what I do is for complete beginners, non-data people, never touched a computer, never done BI. That's kind of my target audience. But it, a lot of these people are getting really really good now at Tableau and they're asking for more advanced features. So I'm going to teach you or kind of give you a really brief introduction to data blending, right? And I've scoured the internet on the base, best way to kind of explain this. I know it because I've applied it in my work, so I know how it works, but it's tricky explaining it to someone who doesn't do data. So instead of explaining it, I'm going to show you data blending versus joins and why and you'll see why they're different and how they behave and that's really what we're interested in is the behavior okay so i've got two data sets here and i'm just going to show you them side by side and we have two lists right so i'm going to be joining two data sets together all right and it's and what i'm going to do is like you can just take a screenshot of this and recreate it so it's not very complex data but what i will show you and I was on the wrong page, is that they're slightly different. And what is different between them? Well, on the left list, we have Makona as a company, but it's not in the right list, right? Actually, I forgot I had a drawing tool, right? And on the list on the right, we have Hubba Bubba, but that's not on the left list, okay? And if we think of this in terms of just a standard join, you know, an SQL join, what will happen is, for example, Apple, it's going to try and connect this row to this one, this one, this one, and this one, right? And then it does it for the next one. So it does it for this one, this one, and so on and so forth. And it does it for every combination, right? So what will happen is it's really the number of duplicates in here multiplied by the number of duplicates in here will give you the outcome or the output of how many rows. In this case, it's going to have eight rows of data, okay? Sometimes we want that. Sometimes we don't. Okay, and let me show you. If I want to represent these two data sets in Tableau, let's go ahead and do it. So I've got one open right here, and we're going to bring those two data sets in. So we're going to start by doing it as a blend, right? So I've got this data set in here. I'm going to bring it in. Okay, and we're going to go sales one. And using the 2020 blending option, we're going to just bring in sales two here. And we're going to tell it the relationship is just the word, uh, just the company name. Okay, we close that, close that, and we're ready to go. So if I wanted to compare these two lists, right, I wanted to have the sales as a bar chart on the left and then bar chart on the right for the other sales, it's pretty simple. I can just grab the company, right, which is the left list. And then let's say I wanted to compare it to the company on the right. What you're going to see is that it's going to filter itself. Well, why? Because Makona only exists on one data set. And what was the other one? Hubba Bubba only exists in the right data set. And by virtue of representing it this way, it's only shown me the ones where they are existing in both. Okay. But let's bring in the sales from the first one. Right. And you can see it's now brought in those sales values. So it's telling me it's null in that second list. Right. And maybe we'll rename this company one and rename this company two just to make it easier. Okay, right. And it's brought that one in. And if we bring in sales uh, two, let's rename this as well, just to make it simpler. And let's do this one sales one. Oh, hang on. Why is it doing that? Uh... Oh, hang on. Sales one label already exists. So we'll just call it sales one level. Right, it was just a renaming issue, and I'll put a bracket there. Okay, so we have a sales one level, and we bring the second one in. Okay, we'll make this a little bit bigger. All right, and let's bring the labels in there. All right, so now let's test it. We can see that Haba Baba only exists on one side, and Makona only exists on the left side. That's okay. What we want to be, what we are interested in, is is this blend or this join or whatever you want to call it creating more records, right? SQL based joins always create new records if you have duplicates, like we said before. So let's test it. Looking at this left side, the value for Apple, like if you sum all this up, will be 40, right? McDonald's will be 60. JBL will be 120. And then Makona will be, what is that? 200, 
Okay, so do we have the same values here? Well, we have 40, JBL is 120, Makona is 200, and Apple is, oh wait, I think I went the wrong way. Uh, <laughs> Apple is 40, uh, McDonald's is 60, yep. Okay, so it's actually preserved the level of detail, as we call it, okay? So that is the level of detail. Oh, well, I actually don't worry too much about that term. Let's look on the right side. Same thing. So Haba Baba is $50. Apple is 40. McDonald's is 80. And JBL in this case is 200. So let's test it one by one. Haba Baba is 50. Apple is 40. JBL is 200. There's nothing from Akona because it doesn't exist. And McDonald's is 80. All right. So in terms of we're combining two data sets. It's okay, it does its job. Great. So why am I doing blends instead of joins? What what the hell is the difference? So let's now do a join and see what happens to the results. Okay. So we're gonna do a new data set. So we're going to not data set, just a new connection type. And before we do that, let's rename this. Let's call this blend test. Right? And let's bring this data set in. And let's bring in sales one. Right, and instead of doing the blend method, right, we're going to double click sales one. So you just click anywhere in this space here, and it's going to change the view. And then we can bring in sales two, and this is going to be the standard join. You can see the Venn diagram, and we're going to do a full outer, right, just because we're not we don't want to filter anything out, we want to see what all the data looks like. We're going to join on the company name, just like we did in blends, okay. So that all looks good. And we're going to call this um, SQL join. Right? And then we go into a new sheet. And let's go ahead and do the exact same exercise. Let's bring in company. Okay. Let's bring in the second company. All right. So you can see still looks the same. Let's bring in sales. And I want to make this a bar chart. And let's bring in sales. Okay. And let's look at this. And now let's look at what the values should or shouldn't be. Okay, let me just bring this here. Let's just get set up. Okay, so Apple is again 40. McDonald's is 60. JBL is 120. And Makona is 200. Let's look at the values. I think my mouse is running out of battery. So Apple is 80 for some reason. Okay, it's actually incorrect. That is not the behavior we want. So this is actually altering the data somehow, and we're gonna go into why. JBL, instead of it being 120, it is now 480, all right? Makona is 200, right? And here it's 200. So why are these two 200? Well, the reason is it's not existing in the other data set. So there's nothing actually happening to it. It's just grabbing it as is. Right? So it seems to be it's only impacting the ones where it exists in both data sets. Right? And then the last one is McDonald's 120, and you can see it's a different value again. So it's doing something to the data we don't want it to do. Let's check the, let me get out of my drawing tool. Let's check sales too. Let's figure out what's going on there. All right, so Haba Baba is 50. Apple is, oh, what's this, 40. Oh, hang on. Um, McDonald's is 80, right? And JBL is 200. Let's look at the values across, and there's something wrong with my drawing tool. Um, Haba Baba is 50, and makes sense because it doesn't exist on the left side. Therefore, there's no actual join taking place, so it's just grabbing it as is. Apple here is 160. Here, it's actually only 40. JBL is 800 here. It should only be 200. Makona is not in this data set, so there's nothing uh, showing there. And then McDonald's is 240, whereas in this one, it's uh, four, uh, sorry, it's uh, 80, okay? So why is it altering our data incorrectly? Well, it's because of the property of the join, right? So let's go into the actual data set. And we're gonna compare what the initial data looks like versus what the final data looks like. And it's pretty easy to do. We're gonna grab both our data sets like so. All right, so this is uh, the left data set, and this one is the right. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to press this button here, the view data button. I'm going to have a look. Okay, all right, let's see if my drawing tool is better. Yep, 
All right, so with Apple, what it's done is what all joins do, right? It does this relationship four times, okay? And then again on the second one, like so. So what it's actually doing is it's creating more rows. That's why we have eight here, right? It's duplicating data. And in a lot of cases, we don't want it to duplicate data. So in the past, before blending, what we would have to do is perform some data cleansing or preparation, or we would have to aggregate the data or sum them up, make them get rid of the duplicates. And that's, all, that's a lot of work to do, right? For a list of just, you know, 17, 18 rows, it's still a little bit of work, actually. Um, expand that to a thousand or ten thousand or a hundred thousand. It's really problematic. We've spent uh, in my professional career weeks, months trying to prepare the data just so we can do a accurate join, right? Because you can imagine that just a few duplicates is enough to completely alter your data. So you could be reporting, "Oh, we've made a thousand dollars in sales today," right? That's what you know, but the data is saying several million. So it's a huge difference. And to avoid that, you can just use blends, right? So we'll do the same exercise with blends. So you can see McDonald's, again, multiplying itself. So three records multiplied by two gives you six, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see JBL, right, which is four by four, gives you 16 rows, gives you even more data. So again, it's multiplying your data out. That's not what we want. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same exercise. But this time, let's look at the blend data set and let's see what it's doing. And if you look here, it's actually considering them as two separate data sets. So it's not actually performing a physical join. It's actually treating them separately. And the way Tableau have done it is that it can maintain the level of detail. It's not creating more records. It's not reducing the number of records. It's just able to handle that particular level of detail so that it can preserve the correct data amounts. All right. So that is, I think, a good basic example of what you can do with it. Um, if you want to learn more or you have a specific issue you're dealing with or you're struggling with joins and you think blending may be the case, you know, uh, don't hesitate to get in touch with me, leave a comment. Um, don't forget to leave a like. Um, and maybe I'll, I'll do another video depending on more kind of complex cases, right? But for the time being, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time.